you know, to reach India, Indian border. Uh, unfortunately, my, my, my mom is not more, no more with me. She died in 1992. And uh, I came to India, then I was in a refugee school for eight good years, and uh, then I started uh, working for the Tibetan community uh, without doing my further education. And uh, if I would have been lucky, born in such a free world country uh, today, I'm sure that uh, my instinct says I might have some kind of a doctor or engineer or some kind of a high degree. That's that's for sure. But uh, unfortunately, uh, my karma, you know, I didn't have that kind of uh, possibility. Uh, today. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit of not the past things or history because uh, everybody knows what's going on, but uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit of about uh, what is happening today since 2008. Because 59, uh, in the, if I talk about uh, now, uh, when I applied for a Canadian passport, the Canadian government, you know, refused to accept me as a Tibetan. So when I pressed hard, how come, you know, I'm a Tibetan, I was born in Tibet, my mother has brought me to India. Then finally, with, with uh, strong arguments, then I was shown a big file from the department. And in that file says, you know, they told me, look, Tibetan, if you are born, before 1949 October, the Canadian document has no problem in saying that uh, you are a Tibetan. So that means what happens in 1949 October when Mao Zedong took over Tibet and he, uh, took over the entire China communist and he declared that he's going to liberate Tibet. So on that one words, I see a date cut out by the Canadian government that the Canadian government also, you know, uh, decided to recognize that and uh, that's why, you know, even now in my passport, I don't get a uh, birthplace, Tibet. You, it's a no mainland or status, as you can tell, but always you have to write in China, you know. But uh, in the history, in 7th century, the Tibetan king was very powerful and the uh, Tibetans uh, have invaded China. And uh, that's the mm -hmm. one story. This is what I recently the Dalai Lama said, you know, there's no point of talking about the history, nobody can change the history, and there's no point of talking what happened yesterday. So, when 19th, uh, the 7th century Tibetan kings invaded China, the Chinese emperor has to fled from that area, and uh, 1959, Chinese invaded Tibet, and the Dalai Lama has to fled India. But that's a reality. But now the Dalai Lama's long-term vision is that Tibetan people are not uh, seeking independence from the China. This is a reality, what Dalai Lama is saying, you know, oh. that uh, we have seen the European Union all with one currency. So why not, why can't we see a whole Asian uh, ah. currency like that, you know, that was the reality. So, so since 2008, I have a little thing I have jotted down, and I think uh, I'll read it out, and uh, then after this, a small note, if anybody is interested or not clear and wanted to ask me something, and I'll try my best to answer if I can. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk about the ruthless repression and uh, persecution in Tibet. Uh, since 2008, China has strengthened its crackdown in its tactic and scope in Tibet. Chinese, they take our, our language, take away land, take away culture, take away wise, take away right, take away faith, take away our dignity, and we have nothing left as a Tibetan. Tibet is running out of time. Learning Tibetan language is a criminal act these days. China is becoming an economy power and wants to control, be it human rights or territory in the southwest China. 
South China Sea. Tibet has Himalaya, the highest mountain in the world that feeds six major rivers. Mm -hmm. In Asia, during any season, Tibet's ecological importance is indisputable as it supports more than 100 million in India, China, Burma, Laos, Thailand, Pakistan, Vietnam, and Cambodia. If we don't take care of the third pole, Himalaya, there will be shortage of water and mass population migration or refugee is bound to happen. Yet we have no sea. Chinese ruins our land, destroys our mountains, pollute our river system, and yet we have no sea. Tibetans inside Tibet are running out of ways to mobilize international support to pressure Chinese leaders. To date, 99 Tibetans, including 29 teenagers, have immolated. Among them are monks, nuns, mothers, fathers, boys, girls, and school children. There are no more with us now. China, instead of correcting their flat policy, they built up more military barracks next to monasteries without any respect to Tibetan sentiments. Tibetans living in one area cannot freely move to another for business or pleasure. Their livelihood is threatened. 99% of the Tibetans do not speak Chinese and therefore they cannot go to China for business or pleasure, except within Tibetan-speaking region where travel documents are imposed and restricted. Many younger generations in Tibet fear that China is deliberately depriving them of moral value by denouncing His Holiness the Dalai Lama and criminalizing Tibetan language, which is the main source of Buddhism. Jamia Palden from Ribong, who self-immolated on March 24, 2012, called for protection of Tibetan language as he set himself ablaze. All those who self-immolated call upon his son is the Dalai Lama to return to Tibet. We living outside and in a free land must speak for them. We have to be Canadian, sometimes act like one. We don't live in Tibet or China, we are in Canada. We have been looking away for too long. Although China has changed its game since 2008, we are not. We are still seeking the same answers. International community must ask China to respect Tibetan culture and language. We also ask China to resume dialogue with His Holiness the Dalai Lama on Tibet issue. We are not seeking independence, but simply the right that are enshrined within the Constitution of People's Republic of China. We acknowledge that there is one constitution for PRC. Non-violence is our chosen path, mm -hmm. no matter how difficult our struggle is, mm -hmm. we will continue even if UNO remains mute. Our struggle is for justice and truth. And at the last and not the least, I would uh, end my uh, briefing here with a special quote from Archbishop Tutu, Nobel laureate and very, very good friend of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. I quote here, If you are neutral in situation of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. Mm -hmm. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse, and you say that you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. Bishop Dutchman Tutu. So with this... Uh, uh, wisdom quote, 
I once again would like to thank uh, Karma for taking this initiative, Doug, and all those who are helping Karma to become this event success and to all the open song community members who have so patiently uh, <coughs> trying to listen and understand what I'm trying to uh, yeah. tell about Tibet. So I would be most happy if anything want, if anybody wants to ask special questions. If I can answer, I'll do that. Thank you so much. If you have a question, please ask me and if you need any help with English, I'll help. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have a question? <laughs> You were pretty straight. I'll, I'll ask one. When you were describing what happened, uh, the Chinese to the Tibet taking the culture, the language, and all that away, uh, it reminds me of what happened to the Scottish people uh, by England. It's very same thing, taking away their, their music and all this other. Uh, but that's just a, a preface question. How do you feel about countries like Canada? the United States doing so much business with uh, China. Do you have any viewpoint on that? Uh.